Oh, I even like double pivots here. Hey guys, Two welcome to Gunpla TV, brought to you by Hobby Link Japan. Hey Sid. Oh, hi guys. Let's see, you got something new there. Yeah, I do. I got the Aegis. Welcome to Gunpla TV. Yeah, I kind of forgot that. I was excited. Uh, a lot of people are. A lot of people are, because this is the, the, the Aegis. We showed this uh, when we were at the uh, show. Okay. And uh, it just came in on the truck less than an hour ago. Sweet, uh, so I fresh. opened the box and took the first one. And uh, now I'm going to show you guys. All right, so it's the, the Aegis here. And this, this manual. One of the things I wanted to show everybody about the manual is that uh, the last three pages, for the most part, are dedicated to the uh, transformation of this thing. Transformation system, it says, into its ma form. Three so pages. You go like this. You can see it's very detailed. Step one, step two, pull this out, drop this in, three, four. And you get to, you know, fling these out, rotate them around. This is going to be fun to try later on, but I'm talking about it as, as if it's easy. But it might not be so easy. It is, no, it, looks it does pretty, not look easy. That, tell me that doesn't look, that doesn't look cool. It looks really cool. That looks really cool. And then all the markings, see, there's the marking. You always get these in the back of the, the uh, mm -hmm. manuals. And uh, there's the markings right here. So we have the, the um, dry transfers here and then a the whole bunch of these stickers. So uh, anybody looking to actually uh, do the kit entirely, stickers and all, look, be prepared to spend a bit of time on that. And uh, we'll start talking about these armor pieces. You can see here's the shield. It's quite long. Remember this is an MG, so it's uh, 1 100 here. And this corresponding shield piece. And uh, it's hard to tell, you know, I've been looking at these. And in some ways I think that they're maybe two different colors. But it's hard to, hard to tell in this mm. light, so I'm going to have to open these up at some point and check it out. Okay. And then you get these uh, effect parts. There's two of these runners for, uh, for it here. And then the, uh, the frame now with the previous, you know, the buster, the blitz, the dual. For the most part, the frames were, were all the same. But as you can see here, even by just looking at the leg piece, it's a completely different animal with the Aegis. They had to totally redo this frame from scratch because of course it transforms. So, uh, you know, there's going to be some similarities in some of the joints, but for the most part, that's a, a brand new frame. So I will, uh, I will be busy this weekend, I think, with some Aegis action. Yeah, so uh, it's finally here. Yeah, yeah. Now, Sid, we were at the show. Uh, what did you think? I thought that this year's uh, uh, hobby show, yeah. All Japan Hobby Model Show, was awesome. Especially the Bandai booth. Yeah, from... What people are saying on YouTube yeah. and Facebook, they're yeah. super cool releases. What I caught mean, your eye, actually? Um, the biggest thing for me was the uh, new Gundam version Cup, which comes out in yeah. December. That's awesome. But we did see the Aegis. We did see the Zeta Gundam RG. We did see the prototype of the Tall Geese. Yeah, that got a lot, that of, got a lot of attention. Yeah. A little block of people around there. And, uh, but the better for me is the version Cup. I mean, some it's people were also excited about the Macross VF1. Yeah, maybe. Macross VF1, but there wasn't very many details for that yeah. because uh, they were keeping it under wraps, I think, until the next couple of days when the site goes live. But apparently it's the first VF1 that Bandai's made yeah. one seventy second transformation Hopefully we model. get it soon. Well, hopefully we'll get some details. Yeah. Well, you never know. So. so a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, you know, I was quite surprised. Yeah. There's uh, Banshee Titanium finish they showed in the show, the Delta Kai, the HG Delta Kai was there too and that looks really good really good i think the next like four or five months for gundam are going to be like better than the previous year yeah sid was excited i was shooting was. video badly of brian and sid was like there's so much cool stuff yeah i i went in there and when you went off with brian to uh to, to, to take the video of the Tamiya booth in hasaga i went to bandai and the first thing i did was just try to snap pictures with my iphone and get them on the facebook and then uh, I came back with my actual other camera and started taking pictures again while I was trying to listen to what uh, the presenters were saying. And then afterwards, when we'd done our filming, I went back with my iPad and tried to take some better photos because the crowd had kind of dwindled by then. So basically, I saw everything three times. Uh, if you don't know, we have a bunch of videos from the show and as yep. well as photos everywhere over Facebook and YouTube. So mm -hmm. if you missed out or you don't know about it, go have a look. Yeah, I'm sure uh, if you're interested in the what we, we saw yeah. the hobby, so then you've seen quite a lot of footage now that's oh, yeah. going on the internet. But uh, fortunately for us, we were there the first day in the morning trying to get that I stuff I always enjoy up. the shows. Yeah, yeah, it was great. They're cool. It was great. 
Uh, where should we begin, Sid? Well, you know, I do have something to show this okay. uh, Ventador. Okay. But uh, it's going to take me a bit to prepare. But I, you were talking about a tank or something. Sid, my tank. All uh, right, Ryan, what are you doing? That's not. It's a Gundam tank, tank Sid. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a Gundam tank. I found it. You I didn't found know it in we the had warehouse. A, you wanted in the it in the warehouse. Yeah, I was in the warehouse as I do from time to time. Occasionally. And I only saw one Gundam tank. Where did this come from? Uh, well, it's probably a restock. We've got a big oh, bunch of restock uh, from uh, Bandai today downstairs in the warehouse. They probably started putting it on the shelves. So you may have not seen it before because it's sold out. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it's an older kit. Yeah. It's from the MSE glue. Yeah, yeah. The, the Hildoler. And the cool thing about this one is that it can actually hold the weapons that come with the uh, HG Zakus. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, so... Uh, it's kind of cool. If I somebody who to do would it, be interested in Gundam tanks might want to build one. But oh, somebody who's yes. interested in Gundam tanks <laughs> might be in the middle of building another Gundam tank. I've heard that one before. That's right. So Actually, before I forget, yeah. we are having a Gundam sale at the moment. Yeah, a big are. one. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why we've got a restock. Yeah, we get lots uh, of stuff coming through. Yeah. Have a look at our Gundam sale. Yeah. I'll yeah. put a link in the post. Some good stuff in there. Yeah. Anyway, yes, why don't you my get the real, real tank. tank? Uh, so here's my tank. I don't think I, well, if you looked at the photos I took last episode, you would have seen the details. It looks good. But uh, yeah, I'll hold up a few pieces and we can have a look. So there we've got the turret. Uh, the gun is that green. And yeah, yeah, I was mistaken. I thought it was a dark gray. So I might have to spray it maybe a black. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy. I did make a mistake. I mean, a lot of people have said I was too close because it was windy. And you can see here, like, it. so I might have to sand that down or I might mask it. Or so. I'll probably yeah. sand it and then mask it. Well, once you uh, actually get more paint on there, it might not be noticeable. Yeah. But, but uh, I'm very happy with the top color. Yeah, it's really good. cool. Um, you can actually see the difference between the colors here. Uh, you can see the gray, the, the green, the NATO green. What was it? NATO gray? NATO black. We NATO used. black, yeah. And uh, so the bottom is pretty sweet. Yeah. And then you've got the gray at the top. So my next... I have to do and I have pictures to show you so uh, this is a example of a tank mm -hmm. with like a soft finish I'd say yeah you can see the edges here are very soft and uh, here's a version which uh, has an, a hard edge mm -hmm. now I, I actually do prefer the hard edge okay um, I'll try it on the base first and see how we go but now Sid um I've heard a few ways of masking yeah some people say use a newspaper some say putty yeah I've is said all of those things. <laughs> Actually, I've got something right here that you could probably use, which would work. Okay. Ah, oh, infamous taping mask. Taping mask, eh? <laughs> There's a substance that you can use to, to mask the things that you want to, to paint. Yeah, so what I want to do is probably uh, take the tape, cut it up, uh, probably look at the pattern of this tank, mm -hmm. and uh, start to mask off certain areas of the tank. I yeah. mean, I'll probably like actually separate the pieces. Oops, there goes the gun, and actually mask them separately. Of course you will. I will probably keep the base separate. I do mm -hmm. want to test at the bottom of the base. So I'll probably just do some test patterns mm -hmm. at the bottom just to get an idea. Yeah. Um, there was one thing actually I read about masking tape. Uh, this, the tummy was one. They said don't put the tape on for too long because it might actually uh, change the color slightly. Mm. So uh, before I paint, I'll have to quickly mask. Yeah. But. Um, other than that, Sid. Oh yeah, and I'm probably going to use this. There? I'm probably going to use the royal light gray. Mm -hmm. See how that goes. We have whites like pearl white and whitey white. Yeah, you want to stay away from that, especially yeah. when you've already put down this 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 dark undercolor. You want to work your way towards that if you're going to use that that color. Yeah. So um, next week you can uh, expect to see me uh, spraying this All madly right. in the wind, and then everyone can complain. <laughs> okay. Um, but Sid, I think you got to get set up. Yeah, I got to do uh, my Aventador stuff. Sweet. All right. All right, I got a bunch of stuff laid out here. And uh, as you can see, well, I've been a little bit busy with this uh, Aventador. Let's talk about first uh, what I have done so far. So I painted more of the interior. You know, this is, uh, these are just the semi-gloss black. This is the interior, it's actually the top, which will go here once this has been painted. I've got the uh, inside of the doors. And these will actually uh, go with these little window pieces. They actually just fit right in there but that uh, they actually want me to paint these first. So I'm not gonna do anything with this yet. And this little piece is actually uh, fits near the back in there. And it actually requires a, uh, a piece of uh, clear plastic, which is right here. And you can see that I've got the mask on this. I will explain how to do this in a, in a second here. 
couple other things. Uh, put this little tiny hard to see clear piece in here. And when I put it there, after I glued it in, I realized looking at the manual that I've actually put, got to put decals on over top of this. So why did they give me a clear part if it takes decals? I don't know. Uh, here's the headlight. Pretty much this is not too bad. There is just a tiny clear part that I had to insert here. If you look at the back, you can see it st sticking out here like so. And uh, there's a decal that needs to go here or I can paint it, but uh, I'll probably just go with a decal. Now here are the the back lights here. You can see it's got the reverse light, brake light, and turn signal all built in here. You basically put them on top of each other and glue them onto this uh, chrome piece. So I had to scrape away the chrome to make sure that the glue would work first. But now that uh, it's all on there, what these would do, if uh, looking at the back of my car here, they just kind of fit into these grooves here. And I'll put them in lightly just to give you guys an idea of what it's going to look like once I actually go to do it. It's starting to look like a car now. It's got light. That is true. Backwards. I can't actually put the uh, the headlights in to show you guys because they actually require glue. They they go in here and they sit down on this in this little groove. Oh, where is it here? This one. And but uh, they actually have to be glued in place. There's no way I can get these to just sit. They have to be glued in place. I mean the, the back lights will sit for now. As well as uh, these things, I've done these. Now you can see there's a clear piece in here. I actually have to put a decal here, but I just left it clear for now because I'm playing around with it. I painted it yellow, right? Because it goes on my part of my Gundam. And it will uh, just slide in from the front. Like so, there's two of these guys. Ah. So this is the beginning of your color scheme. This is the beginning of the color scheme. I think I mentioned in the previous episodes how what would be yellow and whatnot. And uh, there's matching ones in the back, but these ones actually have to go in from behind. So I haven't bothered with any of the decal or anything yet. So. And one of the other thing I did was uh, started on this, this little piece here. This oh. actually holds the windshield wipers. And I got to glue one of these guys down still on here. This actually fits in from, from here. And this is a pretty key piece because not only do you get to... Uh, Get to hold the windshield wipers in place. Here, I'll, I'll hold it up here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, you actually have to slide the window in mm -hmm. into this little groove in the back of this piece, and that's this is pretty much the only thing that's going to support that window. So you have to make sure that you've got it in the right spot. Gotta be that gentle. It's not going to go in the right spot. And you can see that I painted it uh, yellow. Yes. Well, that's because uh, the Arc 782, it has that blue blue torso, mm -hmm. but it has the yellow collar. So this uh, little piece here leading up to the windshield represents that yellow collar. So Very cool. Putting this here, putting this here. Now, speaking of the windshield, this is the runner that has all the uh, windows. Here's the side windows. Here's a piece for the rear for the, uh, the engine bay, for the doors. And here's the big uh, main window. And uh, you'll notice I haven't masked it yet. Well, I figured why not do it on the show and everybody can see how it works. So you're actually given these, uh, this masking sheet with the kit and uh, you pull the pieces out and you drop them into the, onto the piece and you can actually see this definitive line where mm. that mask is supposed to go. So it's not terribly difficult when you look at it. I mean, the small ones went in okay. But uh, yeah, I gotta admit that maybe I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to the uh, the big one. So mm -hmm. uh, here we go. <laughs> this will be good to see. Oh, thanks, thanks, Rye. All right. Got your tweezers. I got everything I need, and it's still not going to be enough. So I'm going to take it actually in the middle, and I'm going to try and go this way instead of trying to get this edge, because there's more corners here and if I can line up these corners here then chances are I've got this and this done as well yeah so oh no mm, bam looking good <laughs> first try it's first actually time. a little bit out there but I'm not too concerned about it as long as this part's right yeah I'm satisfied with that actually. so then you spray is it yeah so what you're actually supposed to do is spray from the back, right? Okay. You, this is the front. It will it will be on here like this, but you spray from the back, and uh, 
because I wanted to use this this matte black spray, and I would just be, I'm just gonna basically go on here. But what if I get an angle wrong and I actually get some on the front wall? Then I'm kind of screwed. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this uh, this masking that uh, I've made Ryan familiar with here, and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna drop it on here like this onto these parts so that even if I get an angle wrong while I'm spraying it's uh, gonna protect that that part of the piece that's very sound advice yeah thanks I thought of it myself <laughs> oh it's a... you can see I haven't even cut off the uh, the sprue marks there uh, yeah, I just I'll, I'll worry about that when it comes time to actually take everything off this is long I'll drop this on here Oops. Fail. All right, that's better. Do you want me to keep recording or? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. And just last but not least, of course, because it's the biggest, most prominent window of the whole thing. Maybe I should just spray black and just say it's tinted. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when you first explained it to me. Got I was like, oh, it's going to be like fully tinted. I've got some tinted windows on yeah. my Lambo. Because you're a player. That's right. You got I was thinking, what do I call this thing? Like, it's, it's a Lamborghini and it's a Gundam. Is it like a Gundam Guinea or is it a... It's know, a Lambo gun. A Vinta Gundam or whatever. I don't know. What do I call this thing? You call it a chick magnet. Well... And that goes without saying. All right, so there we go. I got some mask on this to protect this side. And I don't need these side windows because they're a different thing altogether. So basically, all I got to do is go outside with this and spray. And my windows are done. So before we actually get into the, the questions people yes. have written in, you, do you want to talk about the, the competition we just uh, uh Yeah, the competition has finished. Thank you very much for your entries. Yeah. Um, as I said, I think previously we're going to make a Facebook album and you guys can like, mm -hmm. but we'll have the final vote. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, when you see this video, there will be a post on the Hobbylink TV Facebook. Yeah. And uh, if you can just like your favorites, have a look. And, uh, There's some really good ones. Yeah. There's some oh, really yeah, ones. yeah. Super ones. So we'll announce a winner probably the next episode. Yeah. Next is from Cole Jason. Conception? Concepcion. Concepcion. Hey, I have an Astray Red Frame Kia. Kai, I Kaya? Yeah. Just Kaya. Not the car. Yeah. And I want to make a goldfish. Goldish. Jesus. Gold, I want to make a goldfish. Goldfish finish on the sword's handle. Can you suggest ways on how can I make the goldish finish? Well, aside from getting a gold spray paint or yeah. gold, you know, uh, enamel hand paint, what you can do is uh, do what they do to make um, uh, the gold in some of the gun kits is they first have this silver on top of that they spray that clear yellow and clear orange and they'll have this this goldish look to it could you use that what's that gold paper oh uh, yeah there is um what's it called? hasagawa makes uh basically a, a very large like sticker yeah. that you can cut into various shapes and they have a gold finish one they have a carbon finish one they have a silver finish one platinum yeah you can look and find one of those it's and, not what uh, i mean i mean some vodka drinks have it or and it's like that gold paper <sighs> I know what you're talking about, but yeah, are, you, are you advising this, this gentleman to go pick up some vodka and hope <laughs> gold yeah. paper will... Buy a bottle of vodka, <laughs> strain the gold out of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. I will actually put a link in this post for the, uh, the Hasagawa finish car, um, stickers that they have. Okay. And uh, people, people use them for mostly for car modeling, but okay. they all work in some, some ways. Yeah. Next. Hello, I have a question. But what are speed grades? I found out about them today and they seem to be the same scale as MSIA Gundams. Yeah, speed Can grade joyful. is... Uh, it's kind of like the first grade. Basically, uh, you're given almost like two halves of the gun and you slap it together and you're done kind did of thing. Did we do a speed we grade? We did do a speed grade episode. So uh, if you look back through our previous videos... In the day. It was some time ago though. I think we raced each other and I was just... We did. We, that was what we, our speed grade episode. <laughs> we, we saw who was the fastest. Well... 
As you can guess, I won. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot that. We might have it kicking around this room yeah, somewhere. It might be in the 40 to 50 range. Yeah. When did I join? 40s? 30s? Somewhere around there, but I don't know. Let's not waste time yeah, talking yeah. about it. Okay, next. Does the Delta Chi come finished like it's shown, or is it gray like the Delta Plus? I'm asking because the website shows it gray. Uh, what's probably seeing it on the website when you wrote that comment is just the uh, prototype yeah, shots, which are all just gray. Yeah. Everything right across the whole kit is just gray. And then when they start getting the colored version of the kits, prototypes done, then we change the pictures. So as you can see at the uh, hobby show, the Delta Chi is whitish, blue and yellow. Mm. It's not gray at all. But the tall geese was gray, wasn't it? Yeah, but that yeah, was the, that the was prototype. The prototype. prototype. Like they haven't even made like actual plastic yeah. pieces for it yet. Early version so, beta. Yeah. Uh, next, check sky three three one. On the subject of decals, do you think that do you think the water slides included with the new version car are a new thing for Bandai? What I mean is, do you think they they'll then skip dry mm. transfers included with kits in favor of water slides? Um, this is a good question, but I don't think Bandai is ready to give up on the dry transfers yet. No. I think because on, uh, because the new Gundam is the big release for 2012, and because it's a version car kit, that uh, the amount of markings it's going to have necessitated almost them mm -hmm. being uh, putting in a water slide decal sheet. Yeah. For, I'm, last time we had a big version car December release when it was the... Um, Shinanju, like three or four years ago now, uh, th that came with dry transfers and then stickers, but also water slide decals wow. so you can okay. choose. So um, maybe on big releases, they'll just go with water slides, but I don't think they're going to go too far from the dry transfers. They work pretty well. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Next is from Mark Lipsingnik. Back in the late 1990s, I bought a Gundam F91 model kit and a Pat Labor Hell Diver kit. I don't know the grade of the Gundam kits as they are buried in a box in one of my closets. My question is, should I try building one of these models to start off getting back into model building or should I get an RG or a mega size RX-78 2 to warm <laughs> up into a Gunpla? Also, I'm a huge fan of Macross and I want to build some of those kits as well. Hope you read my question on the show. Yes, we did. Well, there you go, <clears throat> which is my, has now been filled. Uh, if you build the RG or the, or the, even the uh, Mega size first, you will probably never open that older kit box that you have. In Mega the size, way to go! So I say build build that. Uh, well, actually, the best idea would be to order the uh, order one of these kits from us, and while you're waiting for it to get to you, build that one you have in your closet, and then you're all primed and ready to go when that box yeah, arrives. Yeah, send us the, the photos. Uh, the if old F91 it. kit from the late '90s. Yeah, I what know. scale that would be? I think there was a one one hundred at the time, but yeah. there's probably a one one forty fourth. But it, back then they didn't have, really have like the HG UC okay. kits or the you know, it was just you know one one forty four scale. But yeah, build it while your other kits are on the way to you. Next from Scready Three, great show as always. I have two questions. I'm on the home stretch of my MG Heavy Arms EW version, oh, and the arm pegs have broken. What do you suggest I do, considering that the left arm has to carry the Gatling gun, which is a substantial load? Insert, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> he knows this too. <laughs> um, um, yeah. You can try to order parts online to replace those that you've broken through the various uh, online stores that offer that service. You can try to fix the broken peg, but chances are it's going to be pretty weak. Or you can use metal rod in place of that peg oh. and secure that in there. It's not a bad so idea. it's just that shoulder peg that sticks out. Yeah. Then just getting that, some rod in there would probably be enough to allow you to mount the arm on, providing that that metal rod is the right diameter. Yeah, it's a good idea actually. But uh, usually replacement parts is the easiest, to just time consuming while you wait for them to arrive. Sweet. Uh, there is a second question. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's a question, but a statement. Ryan, where is the Millennium Falcon? Give the people what they want. Yes, I agree. It is a question, Ryan. but he put an exclamation mark, making it a statement. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said before, I'm going to start working on it now that the winter's cool. But let me finish the tank, because I'm never going to finish anything on this show. Ever. That's what happens in this hobby. You start, you start on one thing, and then another cool thing catches your eye, and you get that. And maybe you start on that, and another cool thing catches your eye. But I really want to finish the Falcon. <laughs> it's cool. 
But anyway, uh, thank you, Screddy3. I will uh, endeavor to uh, acquiesce to your request. Wow. That's yeah. from uh, Pirates that. of the Caribbean, isn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, Distortish. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I'm planning to visit, uh, to visit there in Japan. I'm from Vancouver. Go Canada. Best city on the world. And probably work and live there. What are some tips when you're just starting there or things you should pay attention to? What do you think, Ryan? You're the more fresh off the bat. <sighs> Actually, this is this a continuation of this thing? Oh, no, no, I think that's okay. A different font. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Ryan, you're. Uh, what, what do you I think? So what should you be aware of? Um, you don't need to speak Japanese, so don't worry about it. Because <laughs> that that's is, me. That is the worst, <laughs> the worst advice you could possibly give. Well, I'm here three years later and I still suck. But um, I don't know if you're coming alone or with friends or how you're doing it. If you're looking for work, uh, Gaijin Pot is your best bet, I'd say. Okay. For English jobs. All right. Um, expect to spend some money initially, especially when renting. A lot. My advice would be. Yeah, I said I. Educate yourself, and uh, so you come here with some kind of degree of some kind, oh, preferably yeah, yeah, specialized. Yeah. If you have a degree of some kind, it makes it easier for companies to sponsor you for work visas. Yeah. If you have a specialized degree, it makes it easier for you to find work in that field. I would also suggest learn oh, Japanese if you're serious about coming here to live. Otherwise, you have to saddle up to some other person, usually a, a, a woman who wants to be with okay, you. Okay, hold on. Okay, then I have to friends. hold on. Then I have to say something. I agree with you. Yeah, I came. My wife is Japanese, and we came together. So mm. she has done everything for me. But I know guys who've come here and kind of worked it out. I mean, you didn't come here with perfect Japanese, did you? No, I hardly spoke anything. Yeah, you see, it's so it but helps a lot. It, it's not if you're in Tokyo. I mean, I was surprised in Tokyo. If you are content getting one of those jobs, like speaking English, for the most part, that's what people do when they come here. Then, yeah, you don't need to speak Japanese. However, if you want to branch outside of that and actually like get in with a Japanese company and work and I must Living admit, I was pretty, like, I have a degree in, in advertising and marketing, and I was pretty lucky to get this job. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a degree helps a lot. I think some jobs even say you need a degree, even to yeah, teach even English. Even to teach English. Many of them yeah. will say yeah. you must have a degree. Must, yeah. um, so. But there are guys like Luke, our ex camera guy, who yeah. didn't have a degree, and you know, he still taught English. Yeah. I don't know what you can expect. It's very different. The food is great. The people. Yeah. Bring your Geiger counter. There's radiation <laughs> floating around. <laughs> and earthquakes. And earthquakes. Beware of earthquakes <laughs> yeah. and tsunamis. If you uh, have, not, have not experienced earthquakes, get ready for an eye-opening yeah. experience. If you come in winter, prepare to be frozen. <laughs> my my very, first, very first night in this country when I came, I was sleeping in my bed, exhausted from the flight because it was like 13 hours. And then the building started shaking like this and I thought, I'm going to die my first yeah. day in this country. <laughs> I, I survived, though. I, I was in tell. some rickety old onsen like building that was like three stories high, and it, I was in the bathroom, <laughs> and it started shaking. I was like, I'm going to die in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, just... Uh, uh, actually, also, I would say, final mm. advice, try not to have too many preconceived ideas yes, about Japan. Yes, I was say that, too. Yeah. Also, don't think that you have to come here and, and do it. If you come here and you don't find that you're liking it, don't torture yourself to stay here. You can go back and live your life. Like A lot of people, they come and they leave everything behind back home so there's nothing to go back to. And they come here and they, it's nothing like they expected it. And they really, really have a hard time from that point on. So like, don't think that you need to commit 100% and you're stuck. You know? Keep an open mind. I've been here for three years and I'm still not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Go to the next one. OMG. <laughs> Why so sunny in Japan? It's already autumn. Mind you that it's already 10 degrees in Toronto. Mm. Ryan, might as well wear something shorter. You mean shorty shorts? He wears short shorts. Shorts. Uh, uh. Shorty shorts. You must be watching your painting. Oh, tank looking good. Suggest mm -hmm. using something to hold up the pieces when petting. And that, my friend, is the truth. I, Brian did a great video where he used like a toilet paper roll to hold yeah. all the pieces and a plastic bag to hold them. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. Sorry. I was rushed. But it, it was, was windy. It was, uh, 
was so nice. It's warm that day. It was windy. Oh, it was, it was warm that day. day. The thing with the Japanese weather is like, it's like there's a cutoff date. You know, it expires. Like it's summer. <laughs> it's cold you know, and then it's going along for a while. Like you get through September and you stop sweating, and then October comes, and then boom, it's now it's fall. Get out your winter clothes yeah. because you're all gonna start catching colds. Already, yeah. it's happened. Let me tell from my voice. Uh, and for Sid, Sid, not mm. sure, but why not some silver for the internal detailing of the car? Uh, yeah, I thought about detailing up the car, but once I get the, the top on this thing, you're not going to really be able to see inside of it. So I'm more interested in what I can do with the actual body of the car than I can do with the interior. So, And, and the manual actually says uh, there's only a couple of places to paint inside the interior. One, only one vent is silver, and okay. then there's a couple of like, flat black ones, and after that you're done the interior detailing also hard yeah next was quite a good question it was on facebook it was from mm -hmm. blake kennis hey guys uh, my name is blake i have been a model railroader my whole 21 years of life just like we last week i found out about the world of gundam and let me just say it's super sweet mm -hmm. i've conquered conquered every aspect of modern trends and was finally getting bored of it so i went looking for something new I found some cool Kotsubukiya kits which led me to Bandai kits and Gundam. I found Gunpla TV on YouTube and had some catching up to do. I started with mm -hmm. episode 1 and finally made it to episode 92 within wow. one week. That's insane. What is that? How many videos? How many hours did you say? 23 hours of video or yeah, something? Yeah, something again? ridiculous. Yeah. Good on you, Blake. <laughs> You're a trooper. You guys <laughs> sold me from the start with Gundam kits. I've ordered four of my first kits and I'm so excited to mm. get them. And started with this new chapter of my model making. Sorry for the long message. Keep Gunpla going. I love it and hope to hear mm -hmm. back. Yeah, that's good mail. I have uh, also, you could say, gotten my start in modeling in general. In uh, model railroad. Yeah. My dad loved model railroading. Like He would design the entire layout of the track. He'd draw it first. Figure out where the loops and cutoffs would be, buy all the, the tracks and then uh, the motor to run the whole thing. And then he'd set to work building by hand little trestles and oh. doing the landscape and making the tunnels. And I would just sit there and watch him. Of course, he wouldn't let me touch it, which is the smart thing. <laughs> and uh, I was just like, wow, this looks really cool. And I got to watch him actually build this thing up. And that's when I became interested in, you know, that the modeling aspect. Of I'm things. super, I mean... I would really like to get into railroad. I yeah. mean, Japan is a place to do it. It's just really yeah. space and cost. Because I like the, yeah. what is the small one, Engage? Engage, yeah. And they're quite expensive. They can get pretty yeah, expensive. Especially if you want a whole thing. Yeah. But they're good. Yep. Uh, and uh, I know when my dad was doing it, there was maybe only one shop within an hour and a half of driving that sold anything worthwhile. So he would just wait. And once a month, he'd take that drive to that shop and try to find the thing he was looking for. And then I moved to Japan. I go to Akihabara, <laughs> go to the third floor of some building, and it's just nothing but yeah, it's crazy. model train. And full yeah. on, like, yeah. setups. It's yeah. mad. Okay, painting and top coat. Hey there, Sid and Ryan. Mm -hmm. I am a Gunpla modeler, and I'm going to do my first top coat job with a painting project I'm doing on my HDGM custom. But the problem is that I have, that I have been having trouble if I should paint the kit first, then top coat it, or top coat the kit, kit first, then paint the model kit. Mm. I really need help, and it will be great if you can give me some info. Always keep up the great work on Gunplay TV. Thanks. Mate. Okay, to clear up its confusion, uh, top coat basically goes on to protect the paint. Yeah. So uh, you're going to do that last. So what you're going to do is uh, you're going to paint the model kit on one that's dry, then you're going to put the top coat on. And then if you feel like doing decal work, uh, then you can do the decal work. And then you can put the top coat on to protect the decals. So just think of top coat as uh, a form of protection for your paint slash It's the decals. top coat. It's the top coat. That's why it's the top coat. Don't worry, mate. I get confused all the time. i got to yeah. talk to Sid or Brian always because yeah. I'm always like, what? What? Uh, what? He'll go to Brian and Brian will tell him something, but he'll not quite understand yeah. it. And then he'll say it to me. I'll be no, like, no, I'll no, be, that's I'll not right. I'll totally trust Brian. I'll go to Sid. And then I was like, I didn't explain it probably to Brian. <laughs> We've had um, these <laughs> happen. <laughs> Uh, I think that's all the questions. That's all the questions. I want to remind everybody to check out the Facebook gallery oh, and yeah, vote on the please. Aventador artwork. Uh, we'll announce that next week. And uh, next week, I should be actually getting down to painting the body. I've held off as long as I could. It's going to be crazy. Uh, to paint this thing, and, and there's no excuses now. I cannot complete this model without starting to mask and paint this thing. And uh, I'm shaking my boots. <laughs> it's got to be 
the yellow you see here. It's got to be white and red and blue. So it's going to be a tough job. I'm, uh, next week I'll also show the spray painting of my tank. Yeah. And then hopefully uh, it'll almost be done. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just like us on Facebook. Yeah. Watch, see more photos on Hobbylink TV. Yeah. And uh, we have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. So check those out. Mm -hmm. And anything else? See you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Later.